Hey all, it's Taylor, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about all things related to trading in your Mac for a new Mac using Apple's trade-in program. I'm doing this because while getting a new Mac is super exciting, and you're probably itching to dive in and start using it, there is kind of a lot to consider when it comes to what to do with your old Mac. How do you transfer and backup your data safely? What data should you consider backing up? And how should you clean and package your old Mac? This video is all about how I personally go about this process and hopefully there's some things in here that can be of help to you for trading in your Mac. This video is sponsored by Mac Paul with their Clean My Mac app and set up software platform. I'll be talking more about both in this video and if you'd like to check them out, I have my affiliate links in the description below. Let's start off with benchmarking your old system. Now, this is a completely optional step, but I want to include it because I always run final benchmarks on my old machine and store them on my NAS so that I have them for historical records. Some of the common benchmark software that I run is Cinebench 2024, which I run for multi and single core, as well as a graphics benchmark. Next, I use Geekbench 6 to do the same thing, multi single core performance for the CPU and OpenGL Metal for the GPU. I then make sure I capture all the screen measurements from my spider colorimeter. All of these I immediately transfer to my server or an external drive so that I'm not storing them on the old machine that's going to be erased soon. Next, get your data backed up. This is so important that you don't lose important documents, pictures, and or videos. These are things that are near impossible to replace if you wipe your Mac without backing them up first. To do that, one of the easiest solutions is to connect an external drive to move your files to. Make sure that the drive you get is a little more than the total amount of storage you're taking up on your current Mac. This process can take a while depending on the speed of the drive. Traditional hard drives are going to take a long time, but will ultimately be cheaper. I prefer the faster, more expensive SSD option. I use this OWC Ultra Thunderbolt 5 drive, which I realize very few devices take advantage of Thunderbolt 5 right now, and the drive is ridiculously expensive. It is very fast though, which I appreciate. You can also use the Mac Migration Assistant if you'd like. I've personally never used it because I like having fine grain control over what I back up, and I've also heard that it can take forever to complete. The next best thing you can do after backing up your data to an external drive is backing up your data to a cloud service. That way there's absolutely no risk that you lose your data due to physically damaging the drive, losing the drive, or God forbid you lose it in a fire. I personally have been using Backblaze for years now and I'm really happy with the backup process. The interface is great for browsing files that you've backed up and there's a whole host of options available to you for restoring your data. Backblaze definitely isn't cheap, but I think it's reasonable for the peace of mind that my data is there in case something catastrophic happens. By the way, Backblaze isn't sponsoring this video and there's no incentive to promote them except for the fact that I really do like their service. Transferring your software between Macs is super easy. It's not like Windows where you have to re-download everything and install it. You can right click the app, click share, and airdrop it to your new Mac. It's as easy as that. Do be aware that software that requires licenses like Adobe or DaVinci Resolve will prompt you to re-enter the license. You may also need to deactivate the license on your previous computer. That's exactly what I had to do with Clean My Mac. All I had to do was view the activations in the options menu and deactivate it from the site once I logged in. MacPaul even let me know that Clean My Mac was out of date and that I could install the new version. Clean My Mac offers a wide variety of functionality all geared around keeping your Mac free of junk files and free of malware. I like how you can dial into the files that are being prepped for deletion before you run that delete command. It's software that's useful and transparent about what it's doing. If you don't want to bother with individual software licenses though, and still want access to very useful apps, then Setapp might be right for you. It's MacPaw's subscription-based software platform, which hosts hundreds of useful apps. It even has an AI assistant tool that you can use to search apps tailored for you. Here I search for apps for software engineering and I can vouch for the DevTools app that it recommends. This is a seriously useful tool. Be sure to check out my affiliate links in the description if Clean My Mac or a set app interests you. Once you've transferred all your apps, if you have any config files, I recommend you back those up too. These might be hidden in Finder and you can reveal them with Shift Command period. 
Ones that I back up are my .dishrc config file since I use that in combination with my terminal for things like aliases. I also make sure to back up my Chrome favorites even though I store them in the cloud with Google sign-in. I always just back them up just to be sure that I have the actual file if I need it. I know I've mentioned backing up things so many times, but for real y'all, it's so, so, so important to back up your files. Finally, you're ready to pack your Mac up for shipment back to Apple, which you should have received the box in your mailbox a few days after purchasing your new Mac. Before packing up the Mac, I gave it a thorough wipe down to remove any smudges on the screen and oils in the keyboard deck as best I could. You don't have to get it perfect. There's an instruction booklet inside detailing how to package the Mac. However, I still had trouble getting mine to fit as the 16 inch MacBook Pro seemed too large for the packaging Apple provided, which is kind of hilarious. It's a big laptop. Nonetheless, I was able to finally get it squeezed in there. I put the charging brick and power cable on top. I ended up adding a new spare power cable that I had laying around to the packaging as my old one had signs of my cat chewing on it and I didn't want to give Apple an excuse to reduce my trade-in value because of this damage. Finally, I dropped it off at the UPS store and prayed Apple would reward me with the full trade-in amount and they did. I got the full value of the machine that Apple quoted me during the new purchase. That's how I trade in my old Macs. If you'd like to see a review of my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro that I traded it in, be sure to check out my video on that and subscribe if you'd like to see a video on the new Mac in a future video. Thank you so much for watching. Check out those MacPaw affiliate links in the description. I'll see you in the next one.